Hello everyone. In today's class, we are discussing about the role of government in the national economy. Before going to that topic, a few words about what is public finance. Public finance studies the economic activity of governments, which are the political organizations of the society. The study deals with the examination of the government as an economic unit, the determination of the level of government activities and expenditures, with the means by which the funds to discharge these activities are raised and with the effects of these expenditure and revenue measures upon the private sectors of the economy. In the modern world, the term public sector is used to denote the activities of the government in its economic areas. In earlier days, in the Western countries, the government sector constituted a small segment of the economy. Major economic activities were market-oriented, conducted by private households and business firms. But with the commencement of the last century, the importance of government sector has increased considerably. Today, public sector has reached such a magnitude that they exercise important influence over the functioning of the entire economy. We can clearly distinguish between three types of economic system with varying role of public sector. And the main economic systems are the market economy, the centrally planned economy, and finally the mixed economy. In theory, under a pure market economy, consumer demand determines the pattern and volume of supply and the market forces determine price. In pure market economy, it is assumed that there is no such state intervention in the economic life of the country. However, in practice, governments Interfere and a pure market economy does not exist, but modified versions are in existence. The present day market economy is dominated by the market mechanism, but with considerable government influence. The economy of USA most closely resembles a typical pure market system. However, the American economy is subject to considerable state intervention, especially after 1930s. The government uses its powers to influence prices and income. It protects consumers from monopolies and provides an increasing range of public goods and services. And the second type of economic system is the centrally planned economy. These economies are operating on Marxian ideologies and principles. In a communist system, state owns all means of production and distribution. The central planning authority under the government determines what will be produced and in what quantity. By whom? and for whom it will be produced and at what price. State intervention is the basic feature of these economies. However, in practice there is no pure centrally planned economy. The economic system which mostly closely resembles a pure centrally planned economy is that of erstwhile USSR. Then finally, the mixed economy. In this system, the private and public sectors of industry coexist in a comparable size. 
government sector constitutes an important organ but not sole decision maker regulating the functioning of the economy it is rather a political compromise and an economic halfway house between a market economy and a centrally planned one india is a typical example for mixed economy then the role of government in economic activity the role of government in economic activity can simply be divided into three allocation function distribution function and finally stabilization function a government is the system by which a state or community is controlled the government plays an important role in any modern day economy it performs many functions and the role of government in economic activity can simply divide into three and the first one is allocation function the government provides certain public goods and services which the private sector fails to provide because there exists no market for them for example national defense public parks national highways and so on and the reason of government providing such goods is the nature of public goods and public goods are by nature non rival and non excludable here non rivalry means the consumption of the good by one individual does not stop another individual from consuming the same good the goods remain available to all the citizens and non excludability means the government cannot exclude any person from enjoying the benefit of the goods whether they pay or not the goods are non excludable in nature certain goods referred to as public goods as distinct from private goods because they cannot be provided through the market mechanism that is by transition between individual consumers and producers and must be provided by the government and this is simply the allocation function the allocative function in budgeting determines on what government revenue will be spent because a high proportion of national income is now devoted to public expenditure then next role is the distribution function the government through its tax and expenditure policies attempts to bring out income redistribution in the society that is fair to all the government transfer payments from one citizen to other through taxation policy for example old age pensions social sector initiatives for the poor people through these programs government provide income support to those individuals who do not have any source of earnings the funds for running these programs comes from progressive taxation that means those with higher income pay higher taxes and the idea of distribution is not to rob the rich by forcing them to pay high taxes or to discourage people from earning more but to make just redistribution which will be equitable for all the people thing like this the per capita consumption of common resources will be higher for rich individuals as compared to the poor people thus they must pay a higher price for its provision for example the space taken by an 
SUV car on the road is much higher than the space taken by a bicycle. Thus, the SUV owner must pay a higher price or tax for the construction of the road as compared to a bicycle owner. Similarly, the old age pensions are not granted by the government but are right of those individuals who have worked endlessly during their productive years. Thus, the government must take care of them by providing old age benefits. The second role of government in economic activity is distribution function. Through its tax and expenditure policy, the government attempts to bring about a distribution of income that is considered fair by the society. The government effects the personal disposable income of households by making them public expenditure and collecting taxes and therefore alter the income distribution. This is the distribution function. Then finally, the stabilization function. The economy tends to undergo periods of instability and fluctuations. The periods of fluctuations require the government to play an active role in removing it. The era of 2008-9 witnessed the global financial crisis. The global financial crisis led to a decline in GDP growth rate along with employment. To help recover the economy from global financial crisis, the government provided fiscal stimulus package for the industry. Let us understand the channel. During times of crisis, we experience low growth rate and high unemployment. In that situation, the government will take fiscal packages like government spending increases or government investment increases. Government fiscal packages will lead to increase in aggregate demand because money comes in the system or the liquidity or purchasing power of the people in the economy will increase. That will ultimately lead to income increases, employment increases and finally the recession over. Similarly, the economy may at times overshoot when expenditure becomes greater than output. In such a situation, when consumers are spending more than what producers are willing to supply, inflation happens. To remove inflation pressure from the economy, the government intervenes through tight fiscal policy. Let us understand the channel. During inflation, government takes tight fiscal policy of reducing government spending. Automatically, public investment decreases, which will lead to decrease in aggregate demand. That will lead to decrease in income, which means liquidity goes out of the market. And finally, inflation subsides. This constitutes the stabilization requirements of the domestic economy. Thank you all. Keep watching.